or the United Technologies and Raytheon merger. Both companies say the deal will make the U.S. more competitive in the aerospace industry with an $8 billion combined research and development investment. One hedge fund certainly uh, is pushing back, however, activist investor Bill Ackman saying the tie-up makes, quote, no sense. He is ready to publicly denounce it. Joining me right now is the CEOs of Raytheon, Tom Kennedy, along with CEO and chairman of United Technologies, Greg Hayes. Gentlemen, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Maria. Let me just ask you, have you gotten back to uh, Greg, Greg Hayes, have you gotten back to Bill Ackman after the letter he sent you? Uh, actually, I you know, will be talking to Bill in the next day or so. I have not had a chance to personally go see him, but I will do that. What is your response to the dilution out of this deal? And he's saying that existing shareholders like himself will be diluted, and that's why it makes no sense. Yeah, I think you got to step back and think about this as a, as a long term. What, why are we doing this merger? And clearly, um, you know, bringing these two great companies together with the technology, uh, with the cash flows, with the investments and the people, we're going to have unprecedented ability to meet customer demands over the long term. We're going to be able to invest. We're going to be able to hire a lot of people. And I think importantly, we're going to generate a lot of cash. And if you think about their first year together with Raytheon, uh, I would expect we have about $8 billion of free cash flow on $15 billion of EBITDA. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see that cash continue to grow at double-digit rates for the, at least into the near future. And I think importantly, the, what you have to keep in mind is this is not a defensive uh, acquisition or merger of equals as, as, as we've been characterizing. We're coming together out of strength. And we're coming together because we believe the technology that Tom has, the technology that we have at UTC, are going to enable us to do things that nobody else can do. Yeah. And I think that story has resonated with our investors. Obviously, um, you know, people are wondering, you know, is this a good deal? And I can't imagine a better deal than coming together in a merger of equals where you bring two great companies together and you can have not just great financial performance, but putting innovation at the forefront of what our customers want and need. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, there are many analysts on Wall Street who have either upgraded the stock or, or talked positively about it. I've got one that I'm looking at right here, uh, offering a compelling combination in large defense growth verticals like hypersonics, ISR, uh, and exactly. uh, energy related as well, as well as commercial aerospace. So, Tom, let's talk about your technology and where you think it can go from here. Give us a sense of what you do with all of that cash. Merged. Well, uh, right off the bat, the combined companies will have about $8 billion a year in research and development. And that's very key today because that allows us to take that underlying technology, which, by the way, supports both the, uh, both the defense part of the business and also the commercial part of the business. I think what we've, we recognize, and when I got together with Greg and we looked at this deal over a year ago, we looked at what the combined technology can do for both the commercial front and then also for the defense front. Uh, for example, on the defense front, uh, the technologies that Pratt & Whitney has relative to heat transfer and uh, material science in, in terms of high temperature materials can be applied directly to our hypersonic solutions for our next generation missiles. On the other side, uh, we have some great air traffic control technology within, uh, you know, within Raytheon, and that combined with the technology that uh, the commercial side of uh, uh, Pratt Whitney has and also uh, Collins has allows us to uh, do things in the air traffic control domain to help upgrade a whole air traffic control system, which is very antiquated, by the way. If anyone who <laughs> flies up the northeast quarter finds out the number of delays we have and airplanes kept on tarmacs, the combined companies can provide that kind of a solution with underlying technologies we have today. So bottom line is uh, we're complementary across all boards. We don't compete. I think one of the uh, uh, you know, very interesting things, and I was asked why now. Well, here's an opportunity to merge with another company that's uh, platform agnostic, just like Raytheon, and that we are complementary. So there's hardly any overlap. There's about one percent overlap between the two businesses. But where the where the synergy is is in the technology. The technologies the two companies have combined, you know, allow us to address you know both the uh, defense business and then also the commercial side of the business. And, and the same question, I guess, uh, for, for you, uh, w when looking at what, how are you going to allocate cash, because uh, I guess you have also acknowledged that you've foregone some potential investments in commercial business while the cash flows of Otis and Carrier have been necessary to support your buildup of inventory. Is that right? Well, look, I, I don't think we have passed on any investment that we thought made sense for the business on a long-term basis. Keep in mind, we're spending about $5 billion on our own this year on R&D. Uh, that's a big nut for a business that's uh, essentially $75 billion in sales. 
Uh, most of that, of course, is on the aerospace side. Uh, we are going to continue to invest in. As the business grows, it gives us more ability to invest in. If you think about, I'll give you just Pratt Whitney as an example, $20 billion in revenue, over a billion dollars in R&D. Um, that's 5 percent of sales. As sales grow, investment's going to grow. And I think, you know, that trend is only going to continue as we, as we grow these businesses. So United Technologies, you're, you're saying that the, the merger will move the headquarters to Connecticut, uh, I'm no, sorry, from Boston. Connecticut to Boston, <laughs> marking another company exodus from a high-tax state. Did that have something to do with it? A number of, uh, of Republicans have been saying, look, here's another example of Connecticut and its high taxes driving another major company out to Boston with this merger, Greg. You know, Maria, that's, you know, I would just say that's just patently false. I mean, the, the, the rationale for this was as a merger of equals, we make compromises. We make compromises on the name, we make compromises on the board composition, we make compromises on headquarters location. Connecticut remains a big, big base for United Technologies. They've got great people, we've got great technology. Otis is going to be headquartered there, Pratt Whitney is headquartered there. Um, and, you know, moving from Connecticut to Massachusetts, it's not like you're going from high cost to low cost. The fact is, we think that there's a huge talent base up in the, up in the mess in the, room, in the Boston area that'll help us in the long term in terms of recruiting talent. But uh, this is not about Connecticut being a bad place to invest or a bad place to be. Um, again, I think it's, a, it's got some great, great people. It's got some great attributes. And I think, again, they're getting their fiscal house in order, which is the key to the long-term success yeah. in Connecticut. By the way, I'm, I'm not criticizing it for that. I mean, we, we've <laughs> talked a lot about what GE has done, and we're, we're all for uh, lower, lower taxes, uh, given the <laughs> fact that we've seen the impact on, on broad economic growth. Absolutely. Let's talk manufacturing jobs for a moment, Tom, because yeah. this technology and this combination of technology you've said will create jobs. A lot of times when two companies merge, they have to cut jobs. But you think you're going to be able to create high-paying jobs? We, uh, we did our forecast, and the combined, uh, you know, the merger will, uh, company will provide over 70,000 jobs uh, over the next five years. And uh, those jobs are, I mean, we, we call them noble jobs. They're, they're jobs that pay way, way over minimum wage. The folks that have those jobs, they can buy a home, they can send their kids to school, they can save up for retirement, they have great health benefits. These are the jobs we want to have in the United States of America and to make America great. And I, I really believe that this, uh, this merger of equals will allow us to have the technology that we need to essentially drive this, co this company to the next level, which will allow us to hire more of these noble jobs, more of these folks. And, and also make America great. Do, do you want to add to that, Greg? And, and also, I yeah. want to get your take on what kind of business opportunities together you might see uh, from the Pentagon, uh, from other governments in terms of defense. Yeah, let me, let me go back to the jobs piece because I think it, it's, it's, it's vitally important as a part of this story. We will be creating jobs. We are creating jobs today. All this investment in technology translates into jobs, not just in engineering jobs, mm -hmm. but also in these, I would call them, high-paying uh, jobs on our shop floor. And I'll give you an example. Um, we have hired about 3,000 people uh, in Connecticut in the last three years. We've gone from 16,000 to 19,000. We're going to add another 1,000 in the next year. Um, and that's just, it's, it's a great story, I think, in terms of what we can do to help job growth. The problem we've got right now, of course, is there's just not enough people to fill all the jobs that we have. I'd also say, you'll, you'll remember, Maria, it wasn't that long ago that uh, President Trump and I were having a discussion around the Carrier Indianapolis facility. And uh, we had a chance uh, the other day to remind the president that you know, we had made a commitment of about 1,100 people in, in Indianapolis today. I think there's 1,365. We're about 25 percent above that. The fact is, these businesses, they generate great jobs, and it's going to continue to do that. As far as the, the technologies, I think, you know, Tom hit it on the head. It's not just one single technology that the Pentagon is looking for. There are 10 different defense priorities. We have technology to address all 10 of those. And I think whether it's uh, hypersonics that Tom talked about, directed energy weapons, uh, whether it's um, something to do with sustainment and, and uh, mobility, assured communications, 
I think we, we can run the gamut of all of the things that the DOD needs and save the DOD money by bringing this company together. And oh, by the way, we have no problem in uh, sharing our technology with the Department of Defense and making our country strong. Okay. Let me ask you this, guys, because, um, you know, these hedge fund managers who are worried about getting diluted, that's uh, Bill Ackman and also Dan Loeb, uh, from Third Point, they say, look, they, they're going to be public about this. We, we are opposing this, and we're going to go public if necessary. This $120 billion aerospace merger is all stock. Would you consider changing this and going some partly cash to appease these investors? Look, Maria, the, the, the beauty of this deal is a merger of equals and zero premium for both companies. We both get premier properties without having to pay a premium and bringing these companies together. And one of the things we don't talk about is, of course, over the last few years, uh, UTC has uh, invested a lot in acquisitions, whether it was Goodrich a couple of years ago or Rockwell Collins. Um, by bringing these two companies together, we get access to Tom's pristine right. balance sheet and an A rating on the debt. And with that flexibility, we can return 18 to 20 billion dollars to our share owners over the next three years. That's about double what they would have gotten with us as a standalone. So, you know, there, there's no need to, to, to lever up. There's no need to, to worry about this. This is going to be a cash machine. It's going to be an innovation machine. So will you be prioritizing the dividend given this cash machine? Should we expect you to be raising the dividend over the years? <laughs> Well, we, uh, both companies have done a great job on a dividend over many, many years. We continue to see that moving forward. And I, this merger of equals gives us the opportunity with a, a great balance sheet, a lot of power that's dry that, and a lot of free cash flow generated year, year over year that, that we believe will, uh, will definitely uh, provide a significant benefit to our shareholders through, through dividends and, in some cases, uh, some other capital uh, deployment. Let me just say, Maria, too, I, I know uh, Bill and Dan are not – perhaps happy with this deal because of the short-term dilution. The fact is, on a, on a, you have to take the long view here. And I think as, as Tom and I have talked over these last six months, we have unlimited potential to grow this business right. through the innovation agenda, through all these 60,000 engineers that we have, through the $8 billion of R&D. Uh, this is going to be a powerhouse of a company that will meet all of the customer needs and provide big value to our customers over time. Any antitrust uh, pushback are you expecting? We, we don't expect any. We've uh, been through that in a lot of detail. We, uh, we looked at both uh, companies. We looked at the, any crossover between the two companies, and we wind up with about a, less than 1% of our revenue in terms of overlap. In fact, one of the things I talked to Greg about, this is when we first started off, I said, Greg, I don't remember the last time our two companies competed against, uh, against each other. We've been, we're complementary. And what I mean by that is it, it, we, in strong area, in areas we are not in, they're in. And uh, when you combine those two areas, you get one plus one equals three across the board. Mm. So I, I, think this is a, I think this is a win-win for all. It's a win-win for our shareholders. It's a win-win for our employees. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a win-win for the, uh, the, the country itself and definitely a win for our, our customers. Uh, we, we're going to generate about a billion dollars in growth synergies uh, starting in year four. Half of that goes back to the Department right. of Defense because we have to, uh, you know, essentially disclose all our costs, and yeah. they'll get that reduction right off that. So, five hundred million dollars a year that the U.S. government will be getting out of this. Everybody wins, and yeah. in the end game, we build a stronger, a stronger company that has a solid technology base, a technology base that this company is willing to use right. to support the security of our nation. And we're here. We know some c companies are not willing to do that. General, thank and you. So, We'll, we'll be watching. Congratulations. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much, Maria. Take Tom care. Tom Kennedy and Greg Hayes joining us there.